Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's been a while, life's got in the way the last couple of months and with Christmas and one thing and another. But uh, I'm back with another video and this one is uh, quite interesting to me because a couple of years ago, anybody that's watched my channel, uh, you'll see I did a video on laser tilt uh, adjustment and building your own DIY laser tilt jig. Uh, it just consisted of a, of a, of a box of wood with a hole on the top and a laser pen at the bottom and you turn the camera and the reflected laser beam plotted a circle on a piece of paper and it told you whether you've got tilt in your imaging train or not but I'll put a link to the video in case you haven't seen it well when I actually built that DIY laser dig there was a lot of people around doing the same thing it wasn't actually my idea I got the idea from somebody else but I thought it'd be a a really good idea to build one because I knew that I had tilt within my cameras. I'd bought a QHY at the time and I definitely got tilt in that and the tilt was actually from the sensor itself in the camera and not from the imaging train or from the focuser. So this uh, laser tilt jig that I built actually worked well. You know, I managed to adjust it out pretty much 100%. Uh, from what I could see in my images, but focus did need to be bang on. Uh, any variation in focus, sometimes it would still show in the extreme corners of the image. Well, at the time, I thought it'd be great to be able to have one of these laser tilt jigs in a handheld unit. You know, I just had the this idea. There's no way I could have ever had the skills to, to build or design anything like this. But I just had this wild idea of having a handheld unit you know, maybe you could sit indoors at your computer uh, and adjust the tilt out. You know, maybe a built-in uh, sensor in, in the thing so you could have a, a live view of the reflected laser on your computer screen so you could have a live view of the adjustments that you were doing. I thought this would be great. Well, lo and behold, a couple of years later, two guys from Norway uh, called Vidar and Eric have produced exactly that. And this is it. It is an all-in-one unit for adjusting all the tilt out of your imaging train in the comfort of your own home. Uh, and these two guys between them, Eric is a, a software engineer and uh, Vidar is more of an engineer. So he's built the unit and worked on that. And Eric has worked on the software and produced the software for the computer so that you get a live view and, and instructions are basically what you need to adjust to get rid of the tilt. Now these guys have been into astrophotography for some years. From Norway, as I said, they've uh, set up a company called Astro Precision. The link is in the description and these are actually on sale now from their website. The unit is pretty much as you see it here now. That's fully fully worked out and that's exactly how it's going to be the software is still being tweaked uh, it's fully working you can download it from the site but it is being tweaked to make it a bit more user friendly uh, and things like that so there will be updates on that uh, coming i will be running through a full adjustment of one of my cameras uh, on my desk with the software on the computer and i'll be showing you all that later in the video but this is the actual unit. As you can see, it's very small, very neat. And it consists, it's got an M48 hole there, which is to slip straight onto a M48 nose piece of a camera. And it's got a notch there. This bit here has got a, la a low powered laser, which shoots the laser out. It hits what I think is a prism and then it's reflected straight down to your camera sensor. The reflected laser dot then goes up inside and there's a camera sensor at the top. It hits that and that gives you the live view on your computer screen of the reflected laser. And then the software calculates the center of that reflected laser dot and it works from that. It's all 3D printed, very, very neat and just a single, single USB cable to connect to your computer. Very, very neat design, very, very clever. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to go onto the computer I'm going to talk you through the software there's a lot of settings you have to fill in before you can actually use it this is settings of your actual imaging setup focal length things like that 
and this is to work out the critical focus zone of your setup because this is based on your critical focus zone and it gives you uh, a load of numbers if you're if you're into figures and numbers and maths there's loads of numbers in the software for you to get your teeth into but there's also visual representations which is what i like which just consists of some circles which basically shows you your uh, critical focus zone the new critical focus zone and the actual amount of tilt you've got in your camera and it's as simple as just getting the red circle which i'll show you as small as possible within the software and I've actually adjusted the tilt on one of my cameras in under three minutes easily uh, at my computer. It's very easily easy. You can leave your image in train fully intact, obviously everything by your focuser. Uh, and as long as you've got some form of tilt adjustment on there, you can then adjust it very, very simply with the visual help on the screen. It even tells you which screws on a three or four point tilt adjuster to adjust. So I've spoken to these guys on a Google Meet and lovely pair of guys and they'd be really interested in hearing any feedback, any ideas you've got. They're very approachable. They answer emails very quickly and they're keen to get feedback because, like I say, this is, this is a fully working version which they've sent me purely for testing purposes. Uh, I actually approached them and asked them if they'd send me one because I was... Well, really interested, ever since I built my own, I was really interested in and the fact that they've made it in such a small, handy unit like this, I think is incredible, to be honest. It's, uh, it's really good. Now, they got their ideas from, which I mentioned in my video, from the Starlight Express laser tilt jig that they use to test in their cameras, amongst other things, which is one of the places I first saw the idea. Uh, so it's strange that they got the idea from... A similar place now they developed this in 2023 uh, well like I say the software is still being developed it's still being made better it's it's excellent it works perfectly um, but there's just a few tweaks they're making and I've given them a bit of my feedback but I know they'd be keen to hear other people's feedback as well on the unit on the software the ease of use and things like that so uh, I'll get onto the computer now and we'll go through the software and I'll do a live demo of the actual tilt adjustment. So we're at the computer now and I've got my setup here. This is my QHY mono setup with the tilt adjuster. I've reset the tilt adjuster so it's back to its zero position, fully closed. And I'm going to do a full um, tilt adjustment on this using the software and go through it all with you. I have the device here ready to, which just fits snugly on the top. And that's how it'll be used. So we'll move into the software now and uh, I'll talk you through it and show you how to do it. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is go to their website, which is astroprecision, all one word, dot no. And you need to download the software for this. Now, there's no actual drivers. It's just the software that you need to download. So go to the website and download that first of all. Okay, so when you've opened the software, the first thing you're going to see is this screen where you need to go to profiles and you need to click add and create a profile. Now I've already done this here. Okay, so when you're in the profile, you've given it a name, in my case QXY268M, and then these are all the details that you need to fill in. All the details of your sensor, width, height in millimetres, pixels, the size of the pixels, the adjustment screws you have on your um, tilt adjuster, in my case it's three. I've never used a four point tilt adjuster, but if you use a four, then you'd tick that. The telescope, diameter, focal length, focal ratio, and in this box reduce, you just put one if you're not using one. I think in the latest version, you can leave this blank, but for, for not using a reducer, just put one in here. And then the Focus, critical focus zone settings. Tolerance of five is a good start. I'd leave it at five. And then the seeing in arc seconds is your, is your average seeing in arc seconds. Again, the ballpark figure for me is 2.5. Uh, and then the distance from the camera sensor to the front of the uh, tilt adjustment unit. In my case, it's 54.6 because uh, I've taken the filter out. So I've, it's slightly reduced. 
And then once these are filled in, you just click on save and close, and then that will be saved and you can recall that profile at any point. So you save that, close it, and then you come back to this screen. And with the device plugged in and connected to your camera, you click on connect instrument. It'll do a little calibrating exposure and you should get this image come up. It's basically the picture of the reflected laser dot on the camera sensor in the instrument with the green cross is going to be always on the centre of this dot. It automatically finds. Now you can adjust the exposure to make this brighter or dimmer. Normally the default setting as you can see is pretty good with a slight white spot in the middle. Now it's a good idea to click the full size box which makes it smaller so when you start to adjust the camera you can actually see this dot move around. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to switch the camera view so you can see what I'm doing with the instrument on the camera while I make the necessary adjustments. Okay, so if you watch now as I turn this, you see how the red dot is moving within that square. That's showing that I have tilt because that red dot should stay completely stationary. So that just gives you an initial idea of the amount of tilt. As I twist it, you can see that rotating. Now I know that this setup has tilt and I know that all the tilt is coming from the actual camera sensor, uh, not the actual imaging train. So the first thing you need to do is to click on calibrate. This will bring up a bigger screen. Now on this screen, what you need to do is if, as you can see, I've got the notch pointed to one of my adjustment screws on my tilt adjuster. So the first thing you want to do, make sure it's all secured on and then click on sample. Now at the bottom you can see it's told me to rotate it and on the right hand side you can see this circle and it lights up and tells you where to rotate it. So I need to rotate it round so the notch is level with the next adjustment screw and click sample. And then it's moved to number three and I move it to the next adjustment screw and click sample again. And as you can see now, it's given me three circles. The green one is the critical focus zone. So as long as you're inside that, that's good start. The acceptable focus error is the blue one. And then the red one is your actual tilt. Now the smaller you make the red circle, the better. If you look over here on the right side at these numbers and look at the end one 11.67 and look at the next one 38.05 you want those two numbers as close as possible. At the moment they're some 27 microns apart. So what we're going to do we need to make the red circle as small as possible. So we click on continue and that puts a cross on the screen. Now that cross is basically the middle of the reflected laser dot and we need to move that cross to the middle of this red circle to eliminate the tilt. So I'm going to make adjustments to this to hopefully move that, oh it is just this screw, it's going to move it pretty much to the, well that's actually one screw has actually done it. I might be able to tweak it by moving, now that's going the wrong way, so let's try this one, and that's moving it up, well, I think we're pretty good there. Okay, so I've made some adjustments, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to repeat the procedure, so you click on repeat, it's still showing me where that dot is, i am already got the device pointed to one of my adjustment screws, it doesn't matter which one, just click on sample, rotate to the next one, let it settle for a second, click on sample, rotate to the next one, again let it settle, click on sample. And then it should draw me another red circle on the screen and look how much smaller that's gone now. Now if you look over here at these figures, we're looking at 38 to 34. We're talking 4 microns difference. That is more than acceptable. 
you're never going to see that amount of tilt on any setup really now you can go again if you want i, I mean really i don't see any tilt. point in in doing it again because if we go back to this screen as you can see when i rotate it there's just no movement on that red dot at all it's staying pretty much i mean there is a tiny bit of movement but that's just me i mean it, you were talking single microns here any movement on this unit you can see just me wobbling it around it will cause it to wobble or if you put a bit more pressure on one side than the other look it will move if i'm as careful as i am you look at the red dot with the cross in the middle that is not really forming a circle anymore like it did before there's no point in adjusting that anymore so it really is as simple as that there is a lot of numbers obviously in that screen to look at but you only really need to take notice of the n2 columns and this is all being refined in in the software now it's being developed it's being made a bit more user friendly there's labels on the different columns so you know what's what uh, and what they mean and different things like that but the important thing is just to follow really the, the circles on the screen and in as simple as i can put it get the red circle as small as you possibly can and when you're talking, gain it within 10 to 15 microns, there's no way that amount of tilt is ever going to show. Even if your focus is very slightly off, it's still not going to, it's still not going to show. So as you can see, it really is that simple. It literally can be done in well under three minutes. So if you're interested in this and uh, want more information, please get in touch via the comments. Leave comments because I think the guys that have created this would love to hear from you they will uh, be looking for feedback they hopefully they will be monitoring the comments so uh, thanks for watching and until the next one clear skies